eating lasagna now. We always go to manager Jim Pitts for some food before the game, get the whole team there, and get a decent meal into them rather than eating McDonald's or whatever the hell 18 to 20 year olds eat now before games. It's something we did start young and it wasn't just me that did it, but our coaching staff. Or, and we were young, we didn't have our houses yet, so our moms and dads had to do it and we wrecked some tables with hot lasagna paper plates on tables. The coaches and captains make the first one and after that we go through the team. I can remember back in the day Jimmy Young calling me, your oven's on, there's a lasagna in it cooking when you get home, just so you know. I made it, but it's cooking at your house so it's ready. We're going to go up and hopefully the boys play well and hopefully can win our seventh only shade title in a row, fourth AAA title, and it'll be the 15th title in 17 years for OMHAs that we can hopefully win tonight. What is NSMO Juvenile Hockey? Like I said, it's Saturday nights at nine, he, from the time I was nine years old. You're going to the rink and you're watching the Minnesota Juvenile game. And when it first started, it was less about the team that had the more skill or who had the better players and more about who could hit the most guys the hardest and manage to somehow pull one in off their ass in the net for a one nothing game or something like that. It was, wasn't a whole lot of skill, but the atmosphere was like electric to say the least. My NHL was the Minnesota Juveniles. Teams wouldn't come play them. It was just that there's no game today. We hit them too hard on the road, they won't come back. Back in the old barn, the glass was about two feet high. So everyone, it felt like as you were playing, everyone was on the ice with you because they were leaning right over the glass, like all the fans, and 800 to 1,000 people for playoff games. We had weaker teams. We had teams that people told me we'd never win. There's no way you're doing it again, and, and we did. In Ennismore, Ontario, the Robert Young Construction Juveniles are the team that everyone strives to play for. However, if it wasn't for Robert Young himself, there may not be a team to play for at all. Father was on council for a long time, and Ennismore never had an, an arena on council. He, they were fortunate enough to be surrounded with some really good, like-minded people. So they set a game plan to get the property for a sports complex. They started a hockey arena with an idea, you know, and then that was the minor hockey program. He just felt that it, there was a need for it. We had to have a central hub for the community and, and sports was the place to try to bring everybody together. It's not just hockey, I mean, it's, it's ball hockey, it's baseball, it's whatever sport that somebody in Ennismore or elsewhere come up and ask him. I mean, it's no question, like, yeah, we'll sponsor, like, you know, he'll sponsor, he'll do what he can do to help. The most valuable player for juvenile wins the Robert E. Young construction. Most dedicated juvenile is what we call it because Bobby Young meant so much to the community, right? Like, he built juvenile, he, he did. And he, he also, his name's at the road, right? This rank's named after him. They donate anything this community needs, they give. And Carl is this, is such a genuine family, that's for sure. There was a season we did not have juvenile hockey, and that was one of my middle years coming up. Dad decided, so well, let's get the hockey back in Ennismore. So we rounded up a few guys and had my brothers come up. I don't even think they were of age to play juvenile back then, but we took a few other friends and family and, as you said, rounded up through the community and put a team together. I can think it was probably the mid-80s, maybe around 86, 87. He had uh, he'd kind of taken hold of the team there. I think there was a time where the three of us brothers played together was the first time that we ever did. Carl and myself and Don, so the three of us got to play together, you know, and there's stuff now that I, and I, I think a lot of memories evolve, you know, at home. You know, we've got pictures with mom and dad and us, you know, in our shirts with the actual championship trophy, you know, and when you're taking them at the time, they may not mean much, but as you get older, they do, they, they sure do. You know, it was the local names, a lot of the Youngs, you know, you have the Kavanaugh's or you'd have Willis's, you'd have uh, Croaks, you know, which basically is, uh, you look in the phone book, <laughs> You're gonna see you're gonna see those names, right? So the the rank was full because cousins, family, aunts, uncles, right? So you just grow to I wanna do that one day. I was fortunate enough to be part of the hockey, but I had a double system because I spent seven or eight years coaching with dad afterwards. 
And I remember talking to him one time, he said, what was one of the best stretches of your life that you remember? And he said, that stretch, you know, the stretch with the, with the kids, like with us guys and with, you know, the family and my sisters and mom. He said, yeah, he said, that was one of the best phases of his life that he remembers. What's special now at my age is that when I come to the rank, there's kids that still walk up to me and will call me coach. You know, and they'll walk up with their kid at their ankle and you give them the big sound of, well, you know, your dad was the best player ever. You know, one of the best sentiment I've ever seen. And you know what, the kid's face lights up and that's what it's all about. So last year was real special for me because I brought Robert on as my assistant coach. So, because his son played for us and Carl was my trainer. If I last long enough, maybe I'll be on the bench as a grandfather. I mean, who knows, right? <laughs> who knows? You know, it's been terrific and, and not just with me. Like, I mean, I, I haven't been able to stand back and see it like with Carl just carrying on the sponsorship. As far as it comes with the team, it's a pretty easy decision. I know where where my dad's roots lie and, you know, I'm I'm the exact same that way. Without him, there is no Juma hockey, I think. There's no Matt Bell history. There's no 12 championships in a row. To me, I, I don't think there is a Ennis Moore Juvenile program or the legacy that it has without Robert Young Sr. In the early 2000s, a young coach named Matt Bell took over the juvenile program. From 2002 to 2018, he led them to 14 OMHA championships. For Matt, however, the juvenile team was always about being together. My first year of juvenile, we had a, and to mean no disregard to any person, we had a, a guy none of us knew coach us from not even from here with no kids. And good for him for coaching, but we weren't, we weren't as homegrown. We weren't, we weren't coaching that we knew and uh, it didn't go well. He left, uh, a guy like Jason Julian came in and you can't help but respect the guy. For me, anyone who's in hockey has a guy. So for me, and now he's one of my best friends, is Jason Julian. We were a tight group then and he owned Jesse's and he coached us and you know, he'd say, come on. He instilled on us too, like, let's be together. We had a tight group of buddies too. We all lived here, we didn't go to school. We stayed here, we got jobs. So it wasn't hard to say, we're going to the Tap and Grill. And Jason's got a band tonight. He used to get bands. You party as a team, you play as a team, you hang out as a team. Through from September right through to the end of March, when the end all Ontario's are, it's pretty well. Every Thursday after practice, you go down to the Jesse's Tap and Grill, you get a pound of wings, you have a pint, you talk about this weekend's game, you talk about the week. You're just always together. The team building thing, you know, we definitely built it when I played, that's for sure. We knew, we knew how to stay together, and we were friends. I think uh, what changed was when I started coaching, we did a new thing, it was gonna be, we're having a team meal every single home playoff game. We can't make you go out every night together. Some of you do have girlfriends, and some of you might not live right here, and some of you just might not like doing that sort of thing. But we can get you in a house together, and we can have laughs, and we can have chats, and we can watch the odd video of old teams, right? That's what we would do before. There's my playing, there's never been a better motivator than a guy that just knows how to get people going, whether I was playing or now in my coaching days. I'd probably say half my texts are from him asking about the game today or the game last night or is this guy ready? Did you talk to this guy? Lives and breathes Ennis Moore juvenile hockey. Because I'll tell you right now, they won both games last series to get back in this series that they're in now. They haven't beat that team once. It was a protest. And then they give up two. That team never lost all year. No one comes into our house and pushes us around, Jack. That award might be named after me, but it's it's after so many people. And I have had so many coaches. I'm uh, I'm a coach that believes in there isn't a trainer on your team. If, if we just won, you're putting coach on your ring too, man. We we did it together, we you all talk. You wanna pick coaches that wanna pick to coach with you that, in all honesty, coach the game, have your fun, hopefully they can help you, but after the game, you talk for another hour about it. You just, it's half the love in it. After 16 years as the head coach of the juvenile team, Matt Bell has decided to step down as the head coach, giving away to one of his former captains, Nick Salter. Yeah, Matt's given the, this is my last year speech, I think four or five times, so he's, he can't stay away from the rink, no matter, like even this year, he's 
He's like, no, I'm done juvenile, can't do it. I just had another baby, not enough time. He just can't stay away from it. And obviously, a, as a first year head coach, is a huge help for that. Because guys respect him and understand what at all he's done in juvenile hockey. Great guy for the community, but he's another father figure for me, definitely, because he would always go to him with anything and talk about anything, and talk hockey, whatever you want. Go have a beer with him, whatever. He's like a brother slash father. So close with everybody that's played. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very, very important. I can't tell you how much I love that players that played for me have got back into it. Having coached under Matt Bell, and Bunsen, it's an easy to preach the things that he does because it always worked, having played under him for six years. While many great players and coaches have passed through the Ennismore Juvenile program, one common theme always remains. Everyone wants to give back to the community. For me, it was the community and Matt and everybody's done so much for me while playing and being a player, whether it's lasagnas every day before playoff games or rides to the rink or Carl and our sponsors at Robert Young paying for buses for every road game. And if we have to stay in a hotel, the hotel's covered. Like, so with that, it was just never a question that I wanted to give back. So for me personally, it was just um, not an obligation, but a want and need to give back to something that you took so much from. I, I love the fact that the young guys are getting into it and staying, and the community loves that fact. What I see from the Juvie team, it's kind of less about uh, the team itself, more about the community. It's a big pride thing to be able to say you play Ennis Moore Juvenile Hockey. Winning the championships is fun, I'm not going to deny that. You know, it's the off-ice things that stay with you forever. It's not just the team, it's it's the whole journey with everybody involved with the team. We have, we have busloads of fans, you know, and friends and coming to games. It's very special. That's one thing I've noticed more from Ennis Moore Juvenile is you're not just representing yourself when you play this. There's a pride with the community you represent and you want to win. And that's kind of something that's been instilled both from the start with Robert Young pretty much creating the juveniles after a layoff and then continued through to Robert Young Jr. and Jason Julian and Matt Bell. One of the greatest things about OMH or minor hockey system is the volunteerism that goes on. I mean, if you've got a team of 15, there's probably five parents that volunteer at any given time on that team and probably another three or four that are outside doing things. At the ages of 16 to 20, a lot of things can happen to a person. And the ones that seem to stay in you know, the right direction where life takes them, often have goals. Take some time to think about it. If you could in like two or three sentences uh, describe you know, what the Juvie team means to the community, and what the community is all about, what would your sort of statement be? To me, it's a, it's a group, really, you know, it brings, it brings everybody together. It, uh, and, it, and for the kids, it's the ultimate ex experience, you know, it, it's friends for life. It's an open door policy and I've had some of my players have to move in with me when times went rough a couple years after that, right, when they were a young adult. It's always been an open door policy, but you have to do it. You have to do it. They, they all mean a lot to us, especially if you go through a whole year and win or lose, they're still, it's your family, it's your family. I think the important thing is paying it forward. I think if I could look back now and see how the kids are paying it forward, that's been a, that's taken on a life of its own. I, the first things that come to my mind are just a sense of pride for the community, something they can say is theirs. He texted uh, our manager, he's like, <laughs> uh, kind of as a joke to tell him, yeah, you got to suit up too, make sure you're wearing a suit. <laughs> We showed up at the house, none of the coaches are, but our manager Jim Pitts, they're decked out in his beige sports blazer and pants. And Jim goes to Matt Bell, he goes, what are you doing, why aren't you wearing a suit? And Matt's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, why would I wear a suit? He's like, well, like, you texted me, we were all wearing suits. And he's like, no, the coaches don't wear suits, just players. Oh, you want the medal too? Oh, <laughs> Woo! Addis Morris Trophy! Addis Morris Trophy! Do it for the camera! Better.